Hello friends and family and welcome to our boring meditation stuff for Friday, October 30th. Yesterday we were talking about Nat Friedman's blog post from the early 2000s where he was uh, hypothesizing about the possibility of learning to change our conscious relationship with time such that um, time appeared completely different to us. And today I wanted to talk about, I saw, I watched a short documentary on Bill Gates um, called Bill's Brain. And it was about his history with Microsoft and now his future with his wealth and philanthropy and uh, different projects that the uh, Gates Foundation is trying to work through, uh, goals they're trying to achieve. Um, admirable goals, uh, I would say. Um, everyone probably has a different opinion about how the Gates Foundation came to be what it is. <laughs> um, I certainly have my own opinions from uh, back in 2002 or whenever I read Nat's blog post and certainly today, uh, 20 years later. But um, I think there was one scene in that documentary uh, that really relates to this same idea, the same idea that we're all bound to the same, um, uh, the same constraints of time, the same units of time, um, which is that uh, the narrator actually commented on Bill Gates's day. So he gets up and he has breakfast and then he goes to the office and he meets people and he has meetings arranged all day and they're of a very specific time length and he's always on time. Um, and she says that for all his money and all his power and all his influence, Bill Gates still has the same amount of time as the rest of us. And in the mundane sphere that is probably true. I'm sure that his days feel much like our days. He has Mondays, he has Fridays, he takes days off. Um, he has relationships to maintain, his own health to maintain. Um, and so in that respect, he's, he's not unlike us. But it is strange to me almost that um, the relationship a person has to time can be altered so drastically, um, so acutely uh, with something so simple <laughs> as, um, as say Anapana or Vipassana meditation that um, it's so readily available and uh, even the Gateses, Bill and Melinda Gates, uh, they meditate at home uh, a small amount and they're interested in meditation and curious about meditation, but somehow they haven't discovered this thing. Um, if Bill Gates had discovered this thing, that commentary wouldn't be in uh, the little documentary, the little um, biography. If it were a pill, if this were a thing that you could get over the counter or with a prescription, here's the pill for more time. Okay, just take one of these. And now your days feel like weeks and you have so much more time to execute on the things that you want to do. Um, this is a sort of mini immortality, right? <laughs> True immortality would be to extend time infinitely um, and, and un, unbind it uh, entirely. But um, our limited mental constructs don't really allow us to consider what immortality would feel like. Um, <laughs> I mean, okay, once our, so our body rots and goes away, or maybe it doesn't, but um, at some point, all the rest of humanity is going to dissolve and our sun is going to explode and everything else. Um, what does our immortality mean 
then on a billion year time scale, uh, it's hard for us to really fathom and it's probably not a worthwhile exercise. But this sort of mini immortality, um, people can readily fantasize about. Well, what if I could live for a hundred years? What if I could live for a thousand years? Um, the, uh, the movie, The Man from Earth, kind of uh, makes a point of walking this uh, little thought exercise um, through in a fun way. And um, this is what meditation is giving you when it, if and when it changes your relationship to time. It, there's no guarantee that your meditation practice is going to change your relationship to time. And there's no guarantee that if it does, your relationship to time will return to normal or become worse because you start drinking a bunch of coffee, <laughs> um, as is the case with me. Uh, but if what you really wanted more than anything else in the world was more time, more execution cycles, uh, you can have them. <laughs> They're readily available. You have to work very hard to get them, but it is entirely possible um, to accomplish much more in your life um, within the same you know, atomic clock time units uh, that we all fundamentally share um, by slicing up time a little differently. And what's interesting about this is that there's this kind of follow-on effect where if you have in those moments or days or weeks, however long this effect might last for you of experiencing time very differently, uh, you're not only experiencing time much differently, but um, if you've had a very deep meditative experience, you're probably also thinking much more clearly. So in those time periods after deep meditation, um, I mean, during deep meditation, you're not thinking, or at least you're not trying to think. But afterward, uh, you go home and you sit down in your study or you lie down in bed, you sit in, on your couch, um, you're on your porch looking at nature, you go for a walk in the woods, and your thoughts become crystal clear. You have such clarity in thinking that, again, it's hard to imagine that someone like Bill Gates is not interested in this. Um, and I mean, obviously the reason is because it's kind of a paradox. You have to experience it for yourself to know that it's there and that it can be experienced. Someone saying in a YouTube video or a white paper or a book or whatever that you get unbelievable clarity through meditation makes it sound like a pill, makes it sound like um, some sort of self-help maneuver, uh, which it's not. Um, the clarity is, is not the goal at all, but it's a, it's a happy side effect. <laughs> um, so I think that uh, this always sort of intrigues me that um, the mega rich and mega powerful uh, in our societies, they have just as much access to this as we do. I mean, if Bill Gates wants to go for a Vipassana meditation course, he still has to fill out a form and sign up and apply and then wait in line. <laughs> Hand in his, his cell phone if he has one of those even, I don't know. Uh, all the usual rigmarole um, would still apply to him, but uh, he's no um, more or less able to do that than we are. Um, and that's, that's kind of interesting to me. Um, and I would be curious if, if he goes for a Vipassana course before he passes away, uh, well, what Bill Gates makes of it, or if he would even agree with any of this. <laughs> we'll find out in the next documentary, I suppose. Okay. I hope that everyone is uh, taking good care of themselves and taking good care of everyone around them. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye.